So I recently did a video about the uh, ID cooling Frostflow 120 VGA, which you can check out here or here, I don't know where it is. <laughs> and in that one, I mentioned that buying this cooler or this liquid cooling loop is more like uh, an investment and you know what? Today, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and I am going to prove that to you. Now, in that video, I used the uh, GPU CLC on the car that I owned at the time, which was the MSI GTX 970, I think it was. Yeah, GTX 970 100 ME. Since then, of course, I have upgraded to a new graphics card and that is the Zotac 1080 Ti Amp Edition. And I got this for a good use price of 2000 ringgit. And actually, this is just a cooler. <laughs> and given how kind of meh the new 20 series cards are, I consider this to actually be a good pickup. Anyway, before we get showing, before we get to showing off how much of a difference this mod makes, let's talk a little about how the uh, Zotac card performs out of the box. Um, I've already done all the testing, so the, the card's actually in the system already and I've done all the tests, so yeah, let's just get to the results. Because we're obviously talking about sticking a new cooler onto this bad boy, let's first talk about temperatures. Out of the box at Ido, Zotex Ice Storm Heat Sink Cooler does actually pretty well at a delta ambient temperature of 16.7. This is of course without the fan spinning at all, so no noise is generated while the card is idling. When stressed out though, that delta from ambient changes to a chunky 57.3 Celsius. Now, this might not sound all that terrible at first, but let's add this value to the ambient temperature numbers and that's 84 Celsius, aka the stock thermal limit of the card. In short, the card hit its thermal limit and it starts to thermal throttle and this brings us nicely then into our second concern, core clocks. The core clocks start off well actually at a peak value of about 1945 MHz but as the temperatures started to rise and the thermal limits were hit, this value eventually dipped to a much lower 1835 and fluctuated around that mark. Of course, we don't have to live with these kinds of heat levels so I got to work on to getting the uh, Force Flow 120 VGA off my GTX 970 and onto the 1080 Ti. The process was, of course, relatively simple. I first start off by disassembling the 1080 Ti by removing the 5 screws at the back that help to hold on and provide pressure between the heatsink and the PCB itself. Once those are off, I give it a little coaxing and it pops right off the PCB. From there, to fully detach the stock heatsink, I just unplug all the headers and the connectors between the two. Of course, I need to do the same with the uh, Frostflow 120 VGA on the GTX 970, so I go ahead and do that. Next step, make sure both surfaces are thoroughly cleaned of course before applying any new thermal paste and putting them back together. Here you can see that I'm using a cotton pad with some acetone and a toothbrush to help get the little bits trapped in those tiny crevices. If it works for teeth, you can bet your sexy little hiney it'll work for GPU dies. I think that many people would, you know, forget or maybe forego this next step, but it is actually super important. I make sure to put some of the uh, provided mini heat sinks from before onto the GPU's memory to help keep them cool. Another thing that I did was to look at where the stock cooler contacted with the GPU before and proceed to cool those components as well. In this case, the MOSFETs and the power phases or chokes of the GPU. If they were cooled by the original heatsink, then it's probably a really good idea for us to cool them down as well. After that, we move on to getting ready to mount the new CLC pump onto the GPU and of course, Please don't forget this as well, make sure that you apply thermal paste onto your GPU die. Here you can see me starting off with a little rice grain to begin with, then realizing that because the die is actually pretty big, I add two more. Remember, adding more is not really a problem, but adding less is. If Tech Jesus Steve from Gamers Nexus said it, then it must be true. 
Oh, by the way, I'm using the Cooler Master Maker Gel here as it has pretty good thermal conductivity. And you can check it out here on the right, uh, where I compared it to the MX4 and the PC Cooler GT2. But of course, you can use whatever you want. Anyway, once that's done, I just lay the CLC coat plate up and slowly lower the PCB onto it. I did it this way, of course, because it makes more sense when needing to secure the frost flow on. And oh, also because the GPU's double slot bracket is just a bit too high and gets in the way, I had something below the CLC cooler to prop it up above the table. Here's a fun fact, I didn't have to change anything about the mounting screws of the GPU block as the Zotac 1080Ti pretty much shares the same mounting holes as the ones on the GTX 970. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Nvidia has really standard mounting holes, so yeah. Once we have contact between the two, don't forget the washers onto the screws before inserting the nuts and tightening them down. Also, it would help not to use too much uh, brute force here. Tighten the screws only so much that they are firmly on and stop when you feel that you have a good amount of resistance. You really don't want to be over tightening it and cracking or damaging your board or GPU die. If you've made it this far then, that's pretty much it. Get it installed back into your PC, make sure that everything is plugged in including the GPU pump, fan for the VRM and MOSFET heatsinks, and of course, the radiator fan. In my case, the card ended up a lot lighter as well compared to the stock cooling and this led to less GPU sag and stress on the PCI Express socket. Well, now that it has been installed, how much of a difference does it actually make? Short answer? Massive. Long answer? Well, let me first talk about the base numbers. In Unigine Superposition, under a 3-run average score under the 1080p Extreme benchmark, I got about 5,779. When compared to other 1080 Ti scores, this is actually one of the lower scores I feel as I had to scroll all the way back some 20 to 30 pages before I even found scores similar to what I got. So then, with this new cooler, I ran my fan at about 50% constantly, which is about um, 1000 RPM, and the temperatures on idle were 24 Celsius, which is exactly the ambient temperatures of my room, so that's really off to an epic start. It really shows off what it can do though on load as the temperatures never quite exceeded 58 Celsius even after 3 runs of superposition where I remind you that the stock Zotac Ice Storm heatsink fan combo was hitting 84 and thermal throttling. On that note as well, because heat was no longer an issue, GPU boost was able to do its thing better and this led to much higher and better sustained clocks with less fluctuations. I'm of course talking about the core clock high of 2000 and a low of 1974, a big difference to the peak of 1945 which eventually throttled down to 1835. The increased clocks, lower temperatures, and lack of fluctuations all led to an increased Unigine superposition score of 6026, which is a good 247 up from the stock value. It does all of this as well at a very respectable noise level, given that most of the noise actually comes from the radiator fan itself and not really the GPU pump or the VRM fans. Have a listen. Of course, this could be the end of the story and we could have called it a success here and be happy with what we have, but with this new thermal headroom, I decided to push it further. And boy, did I manage to push it further. Overclocking the card in MSI Afterburner, I managed to push the core to a pretty 2088 and the memory to a massive 6156, where I pretty much hit the limits of the card itself and not so much the cooling solutions mounted onto it, at least where core temperatures are concerned. I ran Unigine Superposition once more and ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I ended up with a massively better score of 6463, which puts me within maybe 
top 100 scores of this card in 1080p Extreme, which obviously is a massive improvement over the stock 5779. So there you have it. It really is an investment which pays off and, you know, at this point I really don't even need to care about what kind of cooler that any of my new graphics cards come with as any and all drawbacks that it has will be mitigated by installing the Frostflow 120 VGA onto it as it just takes the card onto a higher level. Of course, if you liked this follow-up video, give it a like, share it to your PCMR friends on how to get the most out of your rig without breaking the bank, subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and click the bell icon to stay notified for when new videos go live. My name is Yang aka Tech Rodent, and stay cool everybody.